All right, a common question that I get all the time from owners like yourself is, Jeff, I've got a battery switch. It's got an, it's a source selector off one, two, both. And I also have what you show me down below, which is an automatic combiner relay, or an alternative to that would be, because that's just a marketing name, a VSR, which is a voltage sense relay. And why would I have both on my boat? Like, why would I have a voltage sense relay or an ACR when I have a source selector that gives me the ability to go both? The difference between the two is that an ACR or a VSR is effectively a digital solenoid uh, that puts your batteries in parallel whenever there's a charging voltage and also disconnects them automatically whenever there isn't a charging voltage. And why that's essential for a boat owner is that over time, people will, yes, when the engine is running, will remember to turn the switch to both while the engine is running. But what's going to happen is there might be this occasion where you forget to go back to either one or two. And then what happens is you're at an anchor, you're using your fridge, you're using your appliances, you might be there for two, three days, and now you go to start the engine, and what you did is you actually drained both the engine battery and the house battery. So now both of your both banks have been brought down to 50%, and you go to start the engine, and maybe it's cold. Maybe the engine battery needed to be 100% to start the engine. You go to start it, but you don't have a backup. And so that's what's really nice about an ACR or VSR, is it allows the, an owner to actually have the batteries be put in parallel whenever there's a charging voltage automatically without their involvement and also to have them disconnected without their involvement. So we end up putting hundreds and hundreds of these ACRs and VSRs on boats as a way to provide automation for the owner. The source selector switch is then used more for ways to manually put the batteries in parallel, right, on all or both whenever you want to charge the engine or run the engine and your engine battery is weak. So it's something that you would do un rarely as opposed to every time you run the engine. Another question that a lot of boaters ask themselves is, Jeff, okay, I've got here I've got a source selector switch and I've got a source selector where one is house, two is engine. I'm at an anchor, I've enjoyed, I've been there for two days, uh, I'm on one. Should I start the engine on my house battery or should I start my engine or start my engine on the engine battery, the dedicated engine battery which is on two? Yes, of course you could start the engine off battery one. But it's a little bit you want to confirm every time you start the engine, you want to confirm that your engine battery can do it by itself. Not with the help of the house, but you want the engine battery on its own to prove to you every time you start your engine that it can do it without hassle, without any hiccup, without any difficulty. Because what that gives you, is it gives you confidence that you have a good engine battery. Because an engine battery is relatively inexpensive to change, and you want to go out, you want to know every time you go out that when you're going to actually want to come back home, you're going to be able to start that engine without problem. And that's why I always emphasize to owners to never have the battery switch on both to start an engine. It's like walking around with a cane. Yeah, sure, you could do it, but wouldn't it be nice to know when you are limping as opposed to have a crutch right there ready to take your weight all the time? And then, then who are you going to call when you need more help? If you're always starting on both and something doesn't work, well, what's your backup? You're always using your backup. And so it's essential to keep separation of an engine and a house battery so that you always know if you start having a weak battery, you know that you need to either resolve it yourself or call someone to help you resolve this problem. One of the most common things that we recommend boners to have, especially if you're going to actually use your batteries in a deep cycle application, meaning you're going to actually leave the dock, stay one night overnight or maybe multiple nights or go on a cruise for an extended period of time and you're actually using your batteries and cycling them, is to install what's called a battery monitor. And a battery monitor is essentially a fuel gauge for your batteries and also a speedometer for your batteries. Fuel gauge means it tells you the depth of discharge of your batteries. It tells you in a percentage, are your batteries at 100%, are they at 80%, are they at 20%. And so it gives you in a percentage what is the capacity of your batteries, very similar to what a fuel gauge would do in a fraction, half tank, quarter tank, full tank, which is nice. And also a speedometer tells you how fast you're either charging the batteries or are you depleting them. And the rate at which you deplete your batteries is essential because that tells you if you're actually left a load that you shouldn't have, or maybe you start managing your load so that you're going to start conserving power so that you can stay at an anchorage for longer. And so when you are 
batteries are a little bit like money. You, you know, it's one of those things that you rarely have enough of and you want to actually conserve. And so by knowing the rate at which you burn power, right, the amps coming in and out, you're going to be able to start maybe changing your behavior and start basically conserving power and saying, well, do I really need all these lights on? Should I leave the chart plotter on when I'm at anchor and I'm not using it? What are things that you can turn on and off so that you start conserving power so your battery banks, whatever you have, last you longer? And on this boat, we've got actually one of our, one of our most popular battery monitors. And you can see it's over here. It's actually a Victron battery monitor. Now, what that device shows you right now is actually it shows us the voltage. So if I choose the up and down arrow here, right now what we're seeing is we're seeing a voltage of 13.98, and that is actually at the house battery. If you go down and we select, we're actually seeing right now what that means is we're actually, 13.98 is a float charge, and we're actually seeing right now 0.15 amps going into the batteries. So that's effectively a float current. Two watts is another way to look at it. It's amps and watts instead at the voltage. And here we've got amp hour. So what that tells us is the battery, and you've got a little indicator over here that tells you the battery is completely full. And with batteries, zero means full, and negative is actually, you're always thinking about a little bit like a line of credit. You know, if you've got a line of credit of, you know, maybe $500 or $1,000, if you've got no dollars in your bank account, you're going to start with zero. And you can go all the way to minus 1,000 or minus 500. A battery monitor looks at the same thing. Battery capacity is always in the negative. Here's the other uh, value here what we're seeing is that at zero amp hours, you have 100% of usable battery capacity. Um, this this here is infinity and it's not so relevant for boat owners because the current draw on a house battery fluctuates a lot throughout a day and this is actually predicting how long are your batteries going to last based on the last four minutes or 32 minutes or 16 minutes and since loads coming off irregularly it'd be it's like a little bit like driving a car in the city and saying oh right now in the city i'm doing 30 kilometers an hour therefore if i drive in the city for the next two hours I'm going to have covered 60 kilometers. The problem is your speed in the city varies continuously, and so does your amps on a boat. You know, suddenly the water pump comes on, comes off. And so you're going to find yourself where you might have the water pump come on, it's 15 amps, the fridge turns on another five, a light gets on, a light comes off. All those loads are coming on and off, and it's really like driving a car in the city. You look at the speed in the city, the speed is constantly doing that. And it's really hard to take that speed and say, over the last 30 minutes, my average speed is 40, let's say kilometers an hour or 40 amps, and therefore my batteries are only going to last this amount of time. So pr time prediction on a battery monitor is really hard, uh, but what isn't hard is knowing where you are at at any given moment, i.e. your fuel gauge in a percentage, or knowing the, the speed at which you're using power at any given time. And over, over a period of time, while you're looking at your battery monitor, you're going to be able to start sussing out or assessing oh is this normal i'm you know about to call it for the night i'm looking i only see three amps or i'm going to call it and i see 20 amps what's on why do i have 20 amp draw on my boat what did i leave on did i leave the radar on on the chart plotter uh, are there lights on that i don't know did i leave my running lights on is my anchor light on or off or maybe you're going to bed and it's a draw of zero and you're like well where's my anchor light my anchor light is incandescent and it should be drawing two amps so it starts, you start getting a feel for it because you've got a feedback and it allows owners to start managing their power on their boat better. Jeff, how much power am I using on my boat? What's my daily amp hour budget? And also, do I have the right batteries for that? And also, how am I going to recharge? How am I going to meet my daily demand? So with a battery monitor, you can start figuring out because you've got a history, right? You can see over time, Oh, I started from 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. for 24 hours. I use today 125 amp hours. Next day, I use 137. Next day, I use 105. And over time, you're going to start having an average. And that average is going to tell you, depending on the season, and it should change on the season because our power consumption changes depending if it's a shoulder season, winter, or summer, what is your average amp hours? And you've got to consider what are the big loads on a boat. The biggest load on a boat pretty much up to 70 or 80 feet is refrigeration. Refrigeration is proportionally always the largest load on a boat because as the boat gets bigger and bigger, there's simply more and more fridges. And so at this 
latitude here, um, with the type of compressors we have, fridges generally run at a half duty cycle. Meaning, if you've got a fridge that runs at five amp draw, five amps for 24 hours times 0.5. So that's five times 24. You call that 120 divided by two. So that's a 60 amp hour low just for that. Now, if you, for example, on this boat, you have a water maker, the water maker draws 26 amps. Let's say you run it for two hours. That's two hours at 26 amps. That's 52 amp hours plus the 60 for the fridge. You're at 112 amp hours just to start off with, plus then some water pumps, a little bit of lights, and maybe a little bit of the inverter, a little bit of the instruments, a little bit of the VHF radio. And so then you can find yourself, you know, maybe having on the days you're using the water maker, maybe you're using 150 amp hours a day. The days that you aren't, maybe you're using 100. So now you've got a range, you know, is it 100 to 150 amp hours a day at 12 volts? The next question is, okay, so we've got a battery bank, and on this boat, we've got a battery bank that's four golf cart batteries. Great. Both battery, two sets of batteries are wired in series and then put in parallel. Marketing would say maybe it's more than 400 amp hours, but I would say, let's pull back, let's just call it 400 amp hours. So 400 amp hours where you don't want to bring the battery because they're flooded less than 50%, you bring that down, 50% of 400 is 200 amp hours, but we also know that at bulk charging, the top end takes forever. And so now you're looking at from 85 to 100 is not really usable. So effectively on this boat, you would have from 50 to 85 is really kind of your theoretical range. And so that gives you a third of 400, which is around 135 amp hours, which seems to be what you're using on this boat every day. So this battery bank would be properly sized for pretty much a day, a day and a half of typical use. Now what gets interesting is on this boat, there's actually solar. So on this boat, there's actually an array on top of the Bimini and an array on top of the Dodger. There's 300 watts on top of the Bimini and 80 watts on top of the Dodger. So that gives us 380 watts. We've been promoting and, and encouraging owners to consider solar for over five years now. And on my boat, I've done it as well. And we've probably have over 250 installs. And on these installs, what we've noticed, and I have a lot of our clients that are kind of a little bit geeky like me, that are tracking their daily outputs of solar. What we've noticed is for owners that are using solar here, like in the Pacific Northwest, you know, from Puget Sound all the way to Desolation Sound, not Alaska, because God knows what's gonna happen to the weather. You might not see the sun for a whole summer up there. You might, but you might not. Staying in this kind of vicinity of the Pacific Northwest, you're looking at a ratio between watts and amp hours is a factor of four. And yes, I know there's a long formula, but luckily there's a shorthand. And the shorthand is, if you've got a 100 watt panel, in this latitude, in the summer, from May to end of August, you're looking at 100 divided by four is gonna give you ramp hours. So on this boat, you've got 380 amp watts. 380 watts divided by four is gonna be just a little bit shy of, I don't know, it sounds like 95, 95 amp hours a day. So on this boat, assuming the solar panels are good quality, that the controllers are MPPT controllers, that the wiring is actually, doesn't cause a lot of voltage drop, you're gonna get about 95 amp hours a day of output from those solar panels. And that's not the best output. If it's beautiful, sunny, blue sky, you're gonna get maybe probably divide by three. So you would get 380 divided by three. And if things aren't going so well, it might be 380 divided by five. So your range is really between divide by three if you're optimistic and things are gorgeous blue skies to pretty cloudy, not end of the world cloudy, but pretty cloudy is divided by five. On average, it's four. So on this boat with 95 amp hours a day of solar, you're pretty close. If you're running the water maker maybe only for one hour and you're running out of other loads, you might find yourself on this boat to be able to have maybe a 100 amp hour budget a day. And so right now at 95, you're pretty much close. 